Hey, what's going on guys? Jason Osborne, J.O. Vision, back again with another video. And today, I'm switching it up. I'm talking Photoshop. More importantly, gradient maps and how you can use this quick and easy tool to color grade your photos. Coming up. Woo! All right, so we've got Photoshop open here, and you know, before I get started, you know, I, I really didn't know about this uh, as far as gradient mapping goes until I started diving into Photoshop. Now, I, I primarily use Lightroom, and that's why I have a lot of Lightroom tutorials on my channel, as you guys probably have noticed. But I am starting to dabble and you know, really start to find out what Photoshop can do for photo editing, and I highly recommend that if you don't know how to already, you find a workflow that can incorporate both. Lightroom and Photoshop. I think that they each have their strengths and their weaknesses, and that's why I'm here with gradient mapping. Gradient mapping is used to change the overall colors and tones of the picture, and I believe that gradient mapping just does it a lot cleaner, a lot faster, you can have a lot more accuracy with it, and I think that your pictures overall come uh, out better when you have gradient mapping on them than if you were to just use Lightroom and maybe split toning or something like that alone. I definitely recommend it. It's quick and simple, so let's get right to it. So we've got Lightroom open, I mean, sorry. <laughs> we've got Photoshop open right now. And, uh, you know, picture of my girlfriend, Shauna. She's been an excellent practice model. And I suggest if you have a significant other uh, that doesn't mind you taking up the hobby of photography, practice on them, you know? I have so many shots that I will never release to the world, um, but she allows me to just practice on her. This was not practice though. This was for a special occasion. This was for her birthday. So uh, this is one of the shots that we kept. I chose this picture because I did color grade this picture. This is the final version of this picture, but I used a clean color grade, uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, very natural colors. Um, so you probably can't see anything or you might not be able to tell that there's a color grade on there. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that subtlety, but this would also be a good picture to show you how you can actually use this to your advantage. So the first thing you're gonna do is, is you're going to uh, pretty much click Control J uh, and that is going to create another layer of your background layer. Your background layer is simply the picture that you uploaded and your layer is going to be a duplicate of that picture where you're going to be adding the effects. So uh, once you have your layer, Control J for PC, Command J for Apple, you're going to go up to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. You're gonna hit okay. And once you do that, you'll see that Photoshop automatically puts a basic gradient map over the picture that you have. In this instance, it went from a kind of a purple to a white. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on that and just give you a prime example. We'll just click the first square, which is black and white, and boom. So if you look at this gradient map, the dark sides are on the left, the, uh, the dark colors, the blacks, and everything else are on the left. The lighter the color, it's gonna be on the right, and that's represented in the picture. Any light colors in the picture are gonna be represented by gray to white shading, and dark colors in the picture are gonna be represented by the dark gray and black shading. And that's pretty much how it goes. So once you have that, you know, very nice black and whites here, we're gonna go select a different one. Let's try this dark and purple one. This looks pretty good. Okay, so you're like, okay, Jason, this looks great, uh, or maybe not. <laughs> But you have it and you can see how it turned everything purple uh, and things like that. Now, this is not what I'm talking about. So once you have something that you think might look good on your picture, you're gonna come down here to Opacity. Make sure your gradient map selection is selected. Go to Opacity and you're gonna bring that down until you start to see more of the real picture shine through. Now, this is at 41%, and you can clearly see that there is a nice purplish tint over this picture. Now, if you want to stop there, you could. I'll take it off, you can click the eyeball to see the before and after, and you can see it's a totally different picture. Now, if you wanted to keep it like that, you, all, you really could. If you want it to be more subtle though, I always recommend that you go to this section right here, where it says normal, and then you're gonna go to soft light. Now, what soft light does, it pretty much softens the effect and really you have to turn the opacity all the way up to really get more of the effect of the gradient map 
and the more that the opacities turn down, the more subtle that effect will be. I always turn on the soft light after I get the actual gradient that I want because that allows me to really control how much is being shown through. Uh, so we'll leave it right here at 74% looks pretty good that way and you can do this with any of the colors that you have on here now when you first open up gradient maps it's probably going to have like something looking similar to this right here if you click this little gear symbol you can load other gradient maps up to this uh into the selection presets so i've loaded already color harmonies one and two and photographic toning and i think i also did pastels although i haven't used pastels yet but basically, uh, photographic toning is a great way to get uh, really good color grades that are great for skin tones, or great for portraits, I should say. So once you click photographic toning, it's gonna say, uh, replace current gradients with gradients for photographic toning. If you wanted to replace them, press okay. If you wanna just add them, click append. And once you click append, they will add those to uh, the selection. Then you can go ahead and select whatever one you feel will do your picture justice. Now I'm going to stick with this black and purple one just for the example sake. So what if you're like, well, I like the purple and everything, but what if I want the darks in the picture to be represented by a different color? Well, that's easy. All you have to do is click this little square right here and then come down here to color. Now, any color that is uh, selected here will be shown in the darker parts of the picture. Uh, say I wanted it to be more purplish red in the darker parts of the shadows and things like that. I can go up to here. And as you see, the jacket, her hair, the shadows of the picture, they all have somewhat of a light purple tint to it, okay? Now, I'm not saying this looks good, but I'm just showing you for example purposes. So I'm just gonna leave that right there. Same thing with the whites. If you wanted all the whites and the light and the bright colors, the white and the light and the bright, <laughs> say you wanted the light colors uh, of the picture to be represented by more of a different color. Say you wanted it to be red instead of the peach kind of color that it has. You can, you can select red right here and all of the light colors in the picture will have a reddish tint to them. Um, and that's pretty much how it's done. Now, if you want to only have the gradient map on some parts of the picture. Say I just wanted the gradient map to affect Shauna and I want the background to have its natural original uh, color. What you can do is you can click this white square. When you click gradient maps, usually the layer automatically comes up with it. It's a white square like this, right? Then you're gonna go to your brush, big bracket to get a bigger brush size and you can simply paint away some of that gradient map. Now make sure when you come over here to the left that the black square is in front of the white square. And once you have that, your brush will, accent, uh, will pretty much act as an eraser and it will erase any part of that gradient map that you do not want on there. So if I wanted to get rid of the jacket, say I just wanted it on her face, and I just wanted it on her hair. Everything else I wanted it to stay the same, I could do that. Even I can get rid of it on the black if I wanted to. Just like that. And this is a great way to dial in your color grading and you know really make sure that only parts of the picture you really want uh, to be color graded are affected. So there you go, gradient maps, great way to help you color grade your photos, and I really hope you learned something today. If you did, and hopefully you're gonna get into color grading photos, or maybe you just liked the video, you know what to do, hit that thumbs up button for me, go ahead, smash it, punch it in the face, do whatever you have to do. Just give me a like, please, just like me, that's all I want, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you have a comment or a, uh, you know, anything that you wanna tell me about the tutorial, or maybe you want me to do more photo, pho ha, can't talk today. Even if you want me to do more uh, Photoshop tutorials or if there's something in Photoshop that you want me to do, go ahead, leave a comment in the section below or just say what's up, I don't care. I will always respond back and I converse with everyone who leaves a comment. So thank you for watching the video. I look forward to responding to you. If you haven't yet, you know what I'm gonna say next. Please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of great videos lined up, like I always say, which is the truth, and I hope you guys get to see them, so subscribe. 
This is Jason Osborne, J-O-Vision, and I hope to see you guys again, and I'm out. Peace.